I'm here with Dr. Lawrence Baker from Stanford Medical School, and we're going to talk about what? How about Medicare? Medicare. I think we knew that was going to happen because we had this picture here already. <laughs> and so what, what is this a picture of? I think that's a picture of uh, LBJ signing, in, signing the Medicare Act in 1965. This is the, the time that we passed Medicare. Lyndon Baines Johnson, LBJ. And this, this, is, this, this looks like Truman right over here. Uh, I think so. And maybe he was there because he, I think, was probably old enough by that point to, to be a recipient. Yeah, of, of 65 Medicare. and over. So, so what, so, you know, I, I think we all have a general idea of what Medicare is, that it's kind of a health care program or an insurance program for people who are retired. But then it starts to get fuzzy after that, and, it, and there are all these details that confuse most of us. Yeah, so we talk about Medicare in a bunch of different ways. Medicare is a program. It's a U.S. government program run by the federal government. So it is run by the federal government. Yep. And sometimes it's thrown in with Medicaid. How are they different just at a very high level? Oh, so Medicaid is another, a different insurance program run by the federal government in coordination with state governments. So it's Medicaid is a federal and state program. Medicare is a federal program. Medicare is for uh, folks who are 65 years old and older and people with disabilities, principally those two groups. Medicaid is a program that's aimed at lower income populations. Okay. And so, so this is this is older, older people and disabilities. Yeah. This is low income, kind of a, kind of a poverty issue. Yes, more so. All right, let me write that down. Low income, and this is primarily retirees. Or, yeah. Or, or, or the majority, the older. vast majority of people in there are folks who are there because older they're population. over sixty-five. Okay, and we're just going to focus on Medicare. And Medicare is federal government. Medicaid is the federal and the state governments are in Medicaid because they're always they sound very similar. They sound very similar. Yes. Yeah, no, they're easily confused at certainly at the name level. Uh, really different programs. They operate completely separately. Um, in a few cases, there are people who get access to both of them, but the, they pay differently. They run differently. They're I see. Really but at the federal the level, they are still run by the same organization, the, the Centers for Medicaid and Medicare. Or Medicare yeah, Medicaid. the Department of Health and Human Services has a, a subpart called the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, so if I have CMS. the executive branch, oh, yeah. let me, executive branch of our government, obviously, and then you have the Secretary of Health. Health and Human Services. So Health and Human Services. Health and Human Services. And then within yeah. that, you have you CMS, have CMS, which is the Centers for, and, and you were saying earlier, it should have two M's in it. Yeah, it's the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. So I think it's just shorter to have one M. But, one you know, really, there's two in CMMS. <laughs> okay. Right. Okay. And these, they, they administer at the federal level both Medicare and Medicaid. Yep. But just to reiterate, Medicare is really mainly a federal thing. While Medicaid is both, and, and yeah, they're, and they're run separately. Entirely. So you have Medicare here, yep. Medicare, and then you have Medicaid here. Yeah, I right. see. All right, all right. So let's let's yeah. dive deep into Medicare. So is it? I, I, I guess I guess what is it? We can. So Medicare is an insurance program. Um, it provides insurance coverage for people who are eligible for it. So if you're uh, age 65 and over, or if you have a permanent disability, a couple other small groups. If you have Lou Gehrig's disease or or um, end-stage renal disease, kidney failure, uh, then you can get access to Medicare too, but those are small populations. So if you're in those groups, you're eligible for Medicare. Medicare will provide you with insurance that will cover hospital bills, doctor bills, uh, some prescription drugs. It'll cover lots of the medical care. And is it, and, you, you know, and I hear these things, you know, uh, and this, this is the part that I think gets confusing for everyone is that you start hearing part A, part B, part C, part D. I don't know are, even if those are all the parts. What, 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 what are <laughs> right. those referring to? And are, are they exactly insurance or are they something slightly different? Uh, okay, so part so Medicare has these four parts: Part A, Part B, Part C, and Part D. And you know it can get a little confusing, but we could break it up into mm -hmm. some different pieces. So yeah. the biggest one, in terms of the number of people who are in it, yeah. is what sometimes we call traditional Medicare, uh -huh. and that's what historically is Part A and Part B. And they you kind of want to take those two together because they make a package. Okay. Um, and we call that maybe traditional Medicare. Sometimes people call it original Medicare. Um, standard Medicare, but okay. it, you know when they passed the program, when they first did it, Part A was meant to cover hospital expenditures, and Part B was aimed at doctor cost, cost for seeing physicians. Um, of course, those things go so closely together that nowadays Part A and Part B are kind of a pair. So you, you really rarely would find someone who only wanted Part A or only wanted Part right. B. Right. Sometimes you hear those doctor costs it's outpatient. Like so it's, it's aimed hospitals. At outpatient. Some times you hear the word inpatient means you're you're living there while they're treating you. Outpatient, you go visit them for an hour or two and leave, and that's where you hear those. Yeah. So that's a, a way of breaking up the kinds of services that medicine provides. Medicare mm -hmm. actually gets a little bit. 
um, and it's, it's mix and match. So if the, really a Medicare Part A expenditure is when a hospital bills Medicare for use of the hospital, use of the room, use of the right. services at the hospital. Anytime a doctor bills Medicare, uh, even if they saw the patient in the hospital, they're going to be a Part B I expenditure. See, I see. So it is, it, is, it is strictly inpatient, outpatient. It really is much more along the lines of hospital and doctor. Yep. Okay. So yep. I'll, I'll, I'll maybe put this in some type of I'll contain it away or something. It's, it's <laughs> okay. not necessarily, uh, it's not necessarily outpatient inpatient. But that's maybe one way of. Uh, yeah, it's, it's useful. It is useful to think about okay. that um, uh, outpatient inpatient. So, and, yeah. and, and, and will it cover everything that happens? Are we including drugs or? Okay, so drugs is one key issue. For the, to the to the main question, the first thing mm -hmm. uh, I guess I'd say is that Medicare pr traditional Medicare is pretty comprehensive. It covers you know most of the things that people would normally encounter in their right. needs for healthcare. Does it cover prescription everything? Prescription drugs. Or is one big exception. It does not cut. So parts A and part B do not cover prescription drugs. So when, when Lyndon Johnson was signing this, uh, if Truman had to get prescribed some drug and if he was a Medicare recipient, he would, at, in 1965, he would have had to pay that out of pocket. Uh, yeah. So there. Are, so the, I guess one caveat I'll note is that if you get prescription drugs that are administered to you while you're in the hospital, I see. you're staying in the hospital, they give you drugs. Um, that's going to be generally covered under Part A. It's when you're outpatient and you're going home and then somebody sends you to the pharmacy to pick up a, a I see. A Medicare in its original form would not cover that. They would not cover the part, the outpatient prescription drugs. I see. Um, so that became a problem for some folks, and that has generated changes to the Medicare program right. Since over then, time. Not, there, there, have been, there, there is a part now that covers that. Yeah, so that's the Part D program as a Medicare extension. I don't know how far we want to well, get a feel. Yeah, we can all but, write that right yeah. here. We'll just D for drugs. Yep. Drugs has the, the whole story of prescription drugs and Medicare has you know kind of a lot too. But people would buy additional policies if they had A and B. Right, they'd buy right. themselves a private supplement that might I cover see. drugs sometimes. But now with the new Part D plan, maybe um, okay. people would buy that instead. Oh, well, and then there's other that. stuff and that's going there's on. There's probably a C right there. There's as a C well. that's we, coming. We can get yep. that to a second. But but yep. so A and B traditional A hospitals B doctors and what what percent you know would my with my health insurance, there's a copay every time I visit the doctor. It's you know twenty dollars. How does it work with traditional Medicare with parts A and part B? Um, so if you just have part A and part B, then uh, on the part B side, doctors are covered eighty percent of the Medicare allowable charges. So Medicare has a, a fee schedule that governs what doctors can be paid for services, mm -hmm. and Medicare will cover eighty percent of that, and the patient pays twenty. I see. Uh, uh, for part A, it gets a little more complicated, but there's a co a, a copayment. That you mm -hmm. have to make if you go to the hospital, uh, Medicare is going to have a copayment of a fixed amount, several hundred dollars, uh, coming okay. up. It's just not as simple as eighty twenty. It's not no, not as simple doing. as eighty twenty. You're going to pay a copayment there too. Um, so you know they're not bad coverage, but right. there's certainly some costs you can run up. And if you're pretty sick, you might really have a right. bill that's left and over after Medicare. And there's there's extreme flexibility pay. here. You can see any doctor you want, go to any hospital you want. Yeah, Medicare Part A and Part B is, uh, by to one way of thinking, one of the last bastions of health care as it existed, or health insurance as it existed in America in 1965, 70, 75, when there were really minimal restrictions on what uh, doctors you could see, what hospitals you could use. Doctors get lots of discretion here about the kinds of things they're going to, the right. services they're going to provide, and there's not a lot of oversight that you might see in today's HMOs right. or other kinds of But there are still, I, or maybe I'm wrong here, there still are doctors that won't take Medicare patients. So doctors can elect to be uh, right. Medicare doctors or not, and some doctors, I think, um, decide they have enough business or enough see. patients from other places. And, you know, Medicare is a plan. It's got its rules, and you have to follow the rules. And I some see. people think that Medicare doesn't pay as well as other options they have. So there are a few. Most of the doctors, the vast majority of doctors in the country, will I work see. with Medicare. Right. And you're saying it's, it is kind of the super flexible thing. If, if, if you do have a, an illness, uh, you can go see multiple doctors, get second opinions. You could go to the specialist on the other side of the country. Who uh, So it is, a, it is pretty good that way, although you have to pay, you know, 20 Twenty percent of at yeah. least the doctor's visit, so it's it's a pretty. So what what do are there? So what happens? You know, if, if I'm a retiree, I don't have a lot of money, and you know, I have a major bill. Say I have a surgery, it's fifty thousand dollars. I know that's more of a hospital inpatient thing, but let's say I have to you know pay ten. What, what are there options so that they don't have to pay that out of pocket? Um. So yeah, so there's a bunch of things that go into trying to figure out what the costs to getting this are and, right. and how you might get coverage for some of this, these other services. The main thing that would be the answer to the question is um, there are supplemental policies. Right. So if you're a retiree and you've gotten Part A 
uh, because you're eligible for that and you've paid your Medicare tax and you got Part B, which, for which you do have to pay a little bit of money every month, uh, small, uh, subsidized, but still a premium you have to pay. You might decide in addition to that to pay for a supplemental insurance policy, which you'd buy from uh, a private place. You know, the AARP is one place right. that sells these. There are others, other folks that sell them. You pay an extra premium for that. That's an additional insurance pr uh, plan that you have, and that might agree, and un or you might have a, a method there to have them cover that 20% copay, the additional hospitals. I see. And those plans, there are some different varieties of those that cover more or less generously and, of course, charge a higher or lower premium for that. I see. No, that, that makes complete sense. And, 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 and do people have to pay any premium to be in Medicare? Uh, to get A and B both, you have to. A, you, you generally don't. Mm -hmm. uh, if you pay your Medicare tax for 10 years working, uh, you work for 10 years here and yeah. you pay your Medicare tax, you get Part A for free. Okay. But Part B charges a premium. Uh, so you do have to pay a small monthly. And well, it's what it's like it's like on the order of like a hundred dollars. Yeah, month? generally it's gone up a little bit over time, okay, but it's something so it's, like it's that. It's not too much, and you know maybe a hundred or a little bit more uh, per month, which is which is nothing. I mean, if you're if if you're sixty five or over and you try to get a private policy, you're probably looking at something like a thousand dollars a month. Yeah, so this so I guess two ways of thinking about it. One, this is heavily subsidized compared to what a person you know seventy five years old or eighty would pay for a actual private insurance policy. It would be much much higher than that. You know, there are people who look at that hundred a month and in fixed income and social right. security and things, and you say that's an issue. And so one of the things that's just in the news the last few weeks is the fact that this number, the number went up a bit. Uh, social security payments went up a little bit, but right. less actually than the Medicare. So people I will say, so you know, net, I'm actually kind of lost if you're buying both. So there's some people who will still be worried about that, even though it is heavily subsidized and looks like a great deal. I see. And then finally, so we know A, B, and then we have a little bit of D. We know it's about covering like drugs. drugs. What, what yeah. does C do? C is that it exists. C, yeah, C exists. C uh -huh. um, has been around for 20 or 30 years now. Uh, C is a separate choice. So when you turn 65, let's say, mm -hmm. um, you can make this choice a little bit differently sometimes too. But when you turn 65, uh, you might decide to take Part A and Part B, maybe mm -hmm. buy a traditional supplement, maybe add the Part D drug plan on, make yourself yeah. a package. Or you can elect Part C, and Part C is an alternative. Mm -hmm. uh, under Part C, what happens is the, the CMS, federal government, has contracted with some HMOs, Kaiser, Blue Cross, other places. Sometimes they've contracted with a few PPOs. They've tried other kinds of plans too. Mostly it's HMOs. Uh, and so you have a choice then. You can join Kaiser uh, and have Kaiser be your, your Medicare plan. You can join the Blue Cross one. You, depending on where you are, you'll have different choices of different private plans that have contracted. Uh, and you can do that. The federal government will then pay a bunch of your premium to them. I see. Um, so you'll get covered by the by the private plan with the federal government covering your costs. They might ask you to pay some additional premium. You're going to have to pay your Part right, B right, right. equivalent right. already, so you've got to pay right. that uh, amount. But then you might have to pay a little bit extra. I see. And then you'll get access to what services that has. And so it's some, for some people that's attractive because the, the co-payments and deductibles will be lower. You'll often have more like the $10 copay. Right. Um, you might have access to some prescription drug coverage automatically built in there. Right. Sometimes those cover some vision and other things, right. which might be nice. So this is so uh, one or two plans. I could get this, whereas 80% coverage, well, I, I can't make that rule because hospitals, it, it could be different, but you get this kind of flexible thing, but you have a pretty significant copay, the 20% patient. I could get supplemental insurance for me to cover some of that right over there, yep. or I can do Part C. Is there a name for Part C? Med is Part C these days is called Medicare Advantage. I so the plans in Part C are called Medicare Advantage plans. And so, you know, which you is really just Medicare paying, subsidizing me to get private insurance. Right. From some plans that have agreed to work with Medicare patients. And, and you see. know, they've agreed, they, they do, there's various checking up on them. So they agree to, to basically cover everything that A and B would cover, you know, so you're not going to get skimped on. Too and and much. what do most people do? Do they go A and B, the traditional route, or do they go the C route? So historically, the vast majority of people have gone A and B okay. route. It, it changes, kind of goes up and down over time, right, depending right. on various factors. But uh, you know, over the over a historical average, would be something like 80, 85, 90 percent in A, uh, okay. and maybe 20, 15, okay, 10 so in B and C, depending on which year right, you're looking right, at right. over the last 15 years. Right. And we could probably do a whole series of videos on it. But what what is so? When did D come about? It wasn't part of the original. D was not part of the original. D comes about in the early 2000s mm -hmm. uh, under. George Bush, George W. Bush. Mm -hmm. um, and this is what we heard about. I think it was like 2003. I think it was. I think that's this. probably yeah, about yeah, right. Yeah. And you know, the, the issue there was there's a lot of uh, a lot of folks who were having trouble getting their yeah. outpatient and drugs covered in there. Yeah. Uh, so this is a plan. This is another um, part of Medicare. You can elect to buy this. You normally would 
think about this if you've got A and B and you want to get outpatient drugs yeah. covered, you think about a D plan. Part D is uh, run by the federal government, kind of the way that C is. They uh, they pay a they subsidize and they pay a premium to uh, the private plans that cover drugs, and then I see. the person or at least they organize the market, and the person then pays also some premium to get I this. I see. So a private so kind of person, private, a private entity public. will handle the actual reimbursements for the drugs, but Medicare will pay them. Yeah. So the uh, you know the way to think about it is yeah. just a bunch of private entities with funds flows coming in. You know, partly from the person, partly from Medicare right. to buy these. Okay, so you and, and so you and you would pay. Uh, how, who do you pay your money to? You pay it to Medicare. Or you pay it to these uh, these. Uh, um, I actually doesn't. Uh, yeah, well, I guess it, yeah, it's, it's, know, it works out the same way one way, out. one way or the other. But <laughs> right. you're paying. This is optional. A retiree or someone over sixty five would pay money to essentially get a drug plan subsidized. Yes. Okay. Yes. Cool. Cool. Well, no, this well, is super. Actually, you know, I'm trying to think about subsidies, but. You know, there's some que there's some interesting oh, oh, questions about to the get, extent to, to which they're subsidized. To be able to participate in, yeah. a, a, in a drug plan. I mean, they are subsidized, and the federal government is kicking a bunch of money right. in. But it's a, uh, you know, how exactly the economics of these plans works out has been right, an right. interesting discussion. The right, last right. Years. No, we could make a ton of videos. No, this is super helpful because I think, you know, frankly, I didn't know about the differences right, right here before uh, about 15 minutes ago. <laughs> All right. Well, well, thanks a bunch. Mm -hmm.